Hi everyone, we're just waiting for um, Kim to join us. She's just about here. Thanks for your patience. We're not Hey, Kim, thanks for joining us. <laughs> technology. Hello? Sorry about that. I had a little technical difficulty. Technology. Well, let's go ahead and um, it's 1201. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, Going to kind of kick things off with Kim. Let me um, get our PowerPoint presentation up. Okay. Kim, do you want to take it from here? Yeah. Can, is there a way I can see the PowerPoint or no? Let's see. I've got it open on my other computer, so it's okay. Let me make sure that share my screen. That would help. Ah, those little things. Just those little things. Okay, there we go. I think everybody should be able to see it now. Okay. <clears throat> so you can move to the first slide. We are definitely in exponentially changing times. Okay. Aparo is hoping to help you navigate this um, new world of working remotely and trying to figure out how to navigate your services remotely. Um, you are all on mute. So you will not be able to ask questions during the, the Q&A, during this presentation, but the um, chat function is available. So if you'll put your questions as we go through in that function, Jennifer is curating them and she will bring them together and, and provide them. Kim, I think I lost you. Can you still hear me? Sorry, guys, it looks like um, Kim has dropped off. Um, so yeah, we are um, kind of just kind of pull the nonprofit community together here in Charlotte and just um, kind of help um, provide some support around um, these crazy times that we're in. And I just want to talk a little bit about, I think a lot of people now are um, working remotely and just talking about what kind of effect that has on our culture as a team and organization and our events. And um, we're definitely going, a lot of us going through the same pains here and there's a lot of unknown going on. Um, I would like to um, kind of step back for a minute and just do a quick introduction, hoping that Kim can jump back on. Um, I'm Stephanie McKee. I am the Director of Technology Engagements with Aparo. So I do a lot of our technology advice and consulting for the nonprofits and community. And I'm gonna pass it over to, we have Ben 
Knudsen. I'd like Ben say hello and introduce himself. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Ben Knudsen. I am the technologist for Aparo. So I work closely with Stephanie on providing resources and recommendations for the local area nonprofits. And I also handle our in house um, technology support for Aparo. And then we also have Jennifer Ray. Jennifer, you're on mute. I was mute. Sorry, my <laughs> couldn't click that quite quickly enough. In any case, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Ray. I look after our education initiatives, uh, training, IT coaching, um, general um, support for technology questions and whatnot. Um, that folks have, we try to match you up with um, experts that can help solve those problems. Thanks, also, Jeff. Stephanie, before we move on, let me just say, guys, I can see in the chat panel that uh, many of our attendees are having difficulty with audio. Um, so, heads up on that. I'm not sure if that sound has been resolved. If you guys can message back in and let us know, uh, that'll be helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. And it looks like Kim has rejoined us. And I'll just be transparent. We were just doing a, some introductions, Kim, while you were getting back online. Um, and- But I was doing a great, great presentation, I'm telling you. I know you were, I cannot hear you, but this is, um, I would say it's my first webinar, so I'm not going to lie about that. So um, I appreciate y'all's patience and um, for us kind of working through our first one and all the little kinks that go with it. So we appreciate that. I'll turn it back over to Kim and I, we just went through introductions, Kim, just FYI. Okay. So. Were you able to hear me talking about um, the fact that you'd be able to use the chat function to put your questions in and that you're all on mute? Yes, yes. Okay. That was the last thing okay. I think I heard from you. Okay, so <laughs> let's get right into the agenda. Um, you've been looking at the slide, you know what our agenda is, so I won't go into it any further. Let's go to the next slide. Um, we certainly are in confusing times, and um, this meeting is one example of it, that we have to gather today to figure out how we're going to work remotely and how we're going to do this in a way that works for our teams and for our services um, and for our donors and constituents. This meeting in and of itself is a sign of those confusing times. Aparo had a meeting the other day, an internal meeting, and some things came out of it that I wanted to share with you because I think they will resonate with you. Um, because I, I think they're just a reality. Some of the things that you and your staff may be feeling is that the lack of structure. So even if you're not feeling this, think about how your staff may be feeling it, that a lack of structure when you're home, you suddenly don't have your places and your, your, your little things sitting next to you on your desk and the reminder over there and all the things that just are your comfort of structure around you in your day to say, go from A to B to C. And suddenly you're in a new environment where you don't have that structure. Um, then there's also lack of personal contact. Suddenly you're in a space where um, the next one comes in, the next bullet point comes in too. Your family may be all around you driving you crazy. Your dog may be driving you crazy. Your husband may be driving you crazy. You may be loving having them around and you want to do more with them. All of that together combined with the lack of your teammates right there with you can be very, very stressful. If you'll go forward, And the other thing that we talked about in our meeting was we're doing so many of these team meetings and these virtual meetings that we find we're sitting staring at our screen all day because that's our personal interaction, which is very different. So we're not getting up and moving and walking down the hall to have a conversation with somebody for five minutes. We don't even realize how that impacts our day. And of course, there's fear. There's real fear about what's going on around us and, and the circling of, of misinformation and real information information and how do you decipher between them. So these are all things that your staff and probably you are feeling now too. And we all shared it on our team meeting. And that goes to the next bullet point, if you would, Stephanie, is we encourage you to begin with an internal meeting. Pull your team together in a virtual. Let it be the first one that you do so you can kind of work through the nuances of it and begin that meeting with 
how are you feeling? And I will tell you that the best way to start for how are you feeling is to have the CEO or ED be the one who starts that conversation, who says, this is how I'm feeling. Because then it creates a space of safety for the rest of your team to say, wow, if they're fe feeling a little awkward and scared, I can say it too, and I am. And it's just creates a space of safety where you can share these very bullet points that we shared in our team meeting and just saying it makes it feel better. So that's the beginning of this conversation that we're gonna to have today um, about these confusing times. If you'll go to the next slide. So um, what we're gonna talk about today is um, the working staff is working remotely. That's what the reality is of what we're experiencing now. Um, you're using uh, Office 365 if you've got it, and we're going to talk a little bit about if you don't have Office 365, Stephanie and Ben are going to go into that a little bit more detail. Um, and if you are work, if you do have these tools, there are things that you can use, whether you know how to use them or are comfortable using them, which include Teams, virtual meetings like what we've, we're doing right now, and SharePoint, um, being able to share files and work collaboratively on files while you're not in the same room. Um, communicating, I put a plus plus next to it because it is so important. You've got to over communicate right now to your non to your constituents. Um, we're over communicating to you, to our volunteers, our board, our staff, our donors, our sponsors, and you need to put in place those kinds of things as well. And you might be a small team and might not be used to putting these kinds of things in place. But everything that you're doing, you want to be communicating. I put out an email this morning to a bunch of constituents about some things that we've done this week. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of responses that said, we're with you, we're behind you, and wow, we're impressed that you're still, you're still up and, and doing things. I encourage you to do that. You'll get messages back that you can share with your team about people really being grateful for the fact that you're still working. And it'll also let your constituents know that business is going on um, in a very different way and that you're navigating it. And also the other challenges coming at you, of course, are your services being remote. We at Aparo have left less challenge with that because we can do this remotely with you. You can still get service this way, but I know a lot of you are struggling with the fact that you can't do that. So with that, I wanna turn it over to Stephanie and Ben to talk a little bit about um, the next level of our um, presentation today, which is talking about the foundation for remote working. Sure, thanks, Stephanie. Sam. So I'm just gonna share a little quick personal story just to get us started. So I was one of those people um, over in Europe that um, I just returned last Monday from, I was over there about two weeks on a ski trip in Austria. And I think things are just starting to really get started in the US. And it caused concern when I went thinking, oh my gosh, wonder if things start spreading really fast while we're there, how are we gonna get home? Things like that were going through my head. Um, but I was very fortunate that we had a smooth flight back and entry into the States and then chaos started that Wednesday. So um, as part of, you know, coming back from Europe and, you know, potentially being exposed, I um, worked with Kim and Aparo and decided it was best for me to work at home um, starting last Monday, basically. So I haven't seen my team in person in, um, gosh, a week and a half at least, um, but I have seen them virtually. And all the tools that we've put into place over the years, we are all cloud-based. We use Microsoft Office 365, um, we are using um, Teams for our internal communications and having virtual meetings. Like yesterday, we had our monthly staff meeting, which we usually bring our lunch and we spend an hour and a half together. And um, we did that virtually. And we all had our lunch with us at our computers and um, the meeting went great. Um, so it was kind of the new norm for us. And all meetings that I'm out meeting with nonprofits, Ben and I constantly, we all are, whether it's a corporate partner or a nonprofit, we've changed all those meetings and are using um, Zoom for that. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we kind of dig in here. But kind of the things, just your foundation for remote working, um, 
Yeah, I think most everybody, and I may take this for granted, has high-speed internet um, where you're able to work remotely, either connect to your office. Um, there are issues that come along with that. I think one of the biggest pitfalls with the workforce, a lot more people working remotely now is it's putting a strain more on the IT support of companies um, because you're having to get through extra levels of support, you're working off public networks and um, things like that. Um, so there's, if you're having bandwidth issues, there's speed tests you can take. If um, I think, you know, Spectrum, they're offering free service, I believe, to students now through the next 60 days. I was reading, um, so that's an added benefit. at and is probably doing something too. Um, but if you're experiencing bandwidth issues with working remotely, I would definitely do speed tests and reach out to your um, internet provider because you could potentially get upgraded. Um, then you've got concerns around your, um, then you have concerns around work computer versus personal computer. And I think most of the nonprofits I work with, they provide a computer for their employees, um, which have, you know, standardized for security and, you know, everything, all the tools needed for you to do your job remotely. It gets a little tricky when you're using a home computer um, as well. Sorry, Kim is telling me my audio is going in and out. Um, Thanks, Kim, for letting me know. Let me know if it continues to um, have issues. And I have really, I have fiber and I have really high speed internet at home. <laughs> so, um, so things like that happen. Um, having a, you know, printer scanner is nice. Like I've had to scan information. Um, that I can email to the team. Um, I had to fill out my FSA the other day and I was like, well, how, you know, I need to give that to our business manager. Well, instead I had to scan it and email it to her. Um, so just, you know, changing business processes um, is another big thing just um, to adhere to working remotely. Um, one thing I find helpful is having a dedicated workspace. Um, my husband's at home working as well. His company has um, said he can't travel. Um, so luckily we have two bedrooms and we each have our workspace and we should have a door. So that kind of keeps away the distractions, um, to help, especially if you have, um, I just have a cat, but if you have a dog you know, barking or, you know, your kids are home now too, doing homeschooling. So, um, find a dedicated workspace and also building it to be kind of ergonomic as well. Cause we, I find when I'm working at home, I sit a lot instead of getting up. Um, so I'm trying to get up, stretch, I'll go take a walk. Um, I have a stand-up desk and a sit-down desk, so I kind of go between the two. So I highly recommend that um, if you can. And then just um, talking about internal organization communication. Um, like I said, we use Microsoft Teams. There's lots of communication tools out there, like um, Google Hangouts, part of the Google Suite. Um, Zoom, there's good team meeting. Um, TechSoup has a lot of these tools for um, a low price. So check that out. If you have any questions, you can please feel free to email um, Ben and I, and we can send you direct resources for more information around that. But definitely staying in communication so you don't get, you know, feel disconnected from your team and leadership and, um, yeah, there's um, some more info there. And those of you that use um, Office 365, if you haven't used Teams yet, it's really great for video calling, chatting, you know, just sharing information. It's a really great platform. And I think, uh, yeah, I've talked a lot about the web conferencing tools, which is, you know, pretty much goes back to Zoom and GoToMeeting. Um, as well. And there are some of you, I think, may use Slack, which is a really great tool, collaboration tool. So another thing to think about, you know, when you're working from home is, um, so Kim says the sound is still staticky. I'm going to, um, 
take off my earbuds and see if that helps. So give me just a sec. Do I sound better now? There's still a little bit of chop in there, Stephanie. Say, there. say another sentence. So talking about, just thinking about security um, when you're working remotely. Um, yes. Is a little different. Is it, is it better, Jennifer? Better, much better. Okay, good. It may have been. I was on my, had those Bluetooth things in. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're getting inbound messages too, indicating from our listeners that that's, if it's better for them as well. So thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. Um, so thinking about security, a lot of um, the cloud programs like Microsoft Office 365, Salesforce, um, Blackwall products, um, what else do we use? NetSuite, QuickBooks. If you're using their cloud-based, um, most of them have the two-factor authentication, which means that um, you not only log into your cloud product, you'll get a um, second form of authentication, which is usually a text to your phone, giving you a code to enter. Um, so that provides you two forms of security getting into your application. Some, like on Salesforce, there's an application authentication, I should say authentication application that you can install that um, when you log in, it will ask for approval for, through that app on your phone. So there's different tools like that. Um, and those are good to have, especially when you're working on um, public networks like most of us have at home, or um, I guess a lot of us aren't going to coffee shops anymore to work. So it's mostly your home network. Um, having your antivirus. But most, of the, most of the big tools, like the Blackboard tools and things like that would have the ability to have that two-factor authentication mm -hmm. as well. Exactly, yeah. And another per important thing to have is your antivirus um, and making sure that it stays up to date. It usually does that automatically, but periodically checking to make sure that it's up to date. And you can usually, um, the antivirus agent runs in the lower right hand corner. Um, and you can basically just open it up and it'll say it's up to date or it needs to be updated. So I would um, definitely check on that periodically, um, at least once a week for sure, because there's always updates coming out. Keep your um, Windows operating system up to date as well. Microsoft's continually pushing out patches as is Mac products. Um, that's very important. And once those updates are installed, you want to do a reboot. Um, Encryption is another layer of security. Um, your company may have VPNs set up to access um, remote information that's located on a server inside your office. Um, there's also VPN tools that can work with a cloud infrastructure that are low cost as well. Um, I kind of go back and forth. Two-factor authentication is um, really good. The VPN just creates more of a private point-to-point, -point, what they call a tunnel with extra encryption. Um, so it's there to enhance more of a cloud infrastructure or allow you to access on-premise on information at your office when you're working remotely. Um, and then communicating with your staff, just um, creating some type of just, you know, simple security awareness. Um, there's what they call bad actors out there um, in the cyber world that are um, trying to get us through email spoofing and um, malware around um, getting us to click on email around coronavirus. So just be extra aware. Um, I know Ben has put together a kind of onboarding security awareness presentation for Aparo recently. And um, if you need help with something like that, we can definitely, you know, share what we've put together with you too. You can just let us know um, through an email or through chat. Uh, you know, part of the cyber awareness is just providing some cyber tips um, that I mentioned earlier. So working remotely, I think most, a lot of 
companies, nonprofits for profits, they put um, policies in place around um, how do you use a work computer? What tools can you use? What can you install? How do you save passwords? So we do have policies available, templates that we are happy to share with you around acceptable use agreements for your staff. And um, adding to that now, you've got to look at the remote work agreement. Um, so that's something that um, we have a little bit of verbiage and acceptable use agreement, but with all this coming up, that's something that we need to add to our agreement. So it's something else we're happy, you know, to provide and share some information around what that looks like to for you to share with your employees. Then business continuity is um, that's kind of just really keeping business going as normal as possible. Um, you know. Deciding what your business, um, how are you going to manage your business processes in this remote environment? Um, you know, canceling your events, rescheduling, as Kim mentioned earlier, um, communicating. What does your communication plan look like with your board, your staff, your donors, everyone that's involved with your nonprofit? Um, so this, we've, we do have templates around business continuity of, um, we're gonna to try to post a lot of these resources out on the website and um, everyone that's attending today, we can definitely send an email and just say, hey, they're on the website or we'll include them in the email too. And just, you know, along with the business continuity comes crisis management. Um, and this is kind of back to make sure you have virtual, these are just examples, virtual meeting structure put together with your team, with your leadership, um, have things scheduled on your calendar to stay in touch so you don't get disconnected. Um, and just reiterating, you know, you may have to change the way business processes work, you know, being remote. Um, and prepare your clients, kind of give them a 30, 60, 90 day plan. I think at this point, we're kind of looking out um, 14 days, but I think we all know it's probably, this is probably gonna go on for several months at least. So kind of preparing your clients and continue to communicate with them about any changes or, um, you know, back to your events being canceled, you know, how you're gonna handle things. If you do in-person trainings, you're gonna take those to virtual trainings. Um, so key here is just communication and um, sharing, you know, this with everyone involved with your nonprofit. Kim, do you want to take this slide? Oops, let me unmute myself and sure. I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, this is kind of where we get into that. The, the unknown, the feelings of disruption. And um, I encourage you to lean into those feelings um, to help your staff navigate them. Um, you probably already are, but I want to encourage that again and be another voice of that. Um, what we're finding um, best practices out there as we're looking around at different organizations who are having success working remotely is to have leadership touch bases regularly. So you have virtual connections like this. You can do it on your phone. One of the things um, that Stephanie was talking about, if you do have Office 365, you can put it on your phone and Teams can be here on your phone. So you can be anywhere and have a visual connection with someone on your team or a donor, uh, not a donor because Teams is for internal. Um, but um, another thing is, so set those up weekly so that you're having a place. We do, I have always done a stand up meeting weekly. If you're not doing those, I encourage you to make them virtually right now. So you have 30 minutes where you come together and you can just see each other and have that connection as a whole team. It's a little cumbersome because it doesn't work real fluidly on a, a virtual tool. Um, it, it has crackles in it like we've been noticing. And it also, um, you end up cutting people off sometimes because you're not sure when to lean in, start talking, you wait too long to pause, somebody else starts in. So it's a little, a little bit different than human contact, but it's really important to keeping that culture going, which is what we're all gonna really have to work on over these next several weeks or months, is keeping our team together and motivated. Um, I think a structured schedule for people, particularly those who are used to it being more structured, helping them figure out how working at home can have real structure to it and putting in that schedule um, walk time. You know, um, we were talking about how sitting at the screen all day can be really unnerving and I I'm thinking about putting a walk time 
15 minutes on my calendar periodically so that I just make myself get up, that nobody books that time for another call, um, so that I will intentionally get up and, and leave my desk and move and, and have some interaction with the dog or the radio or something. <laughs> Stephanie, you can scroll on. I think there's a little bit more on this slide. I'm not sure. Or maybe not. Maybe we're done. And, and the last part is, yeah, the, the CEO ED shares first for space for safety. And I talked about that early on. Um, so we're now going to be moving to the Q&A portion of our presentation and um, encourage you to use the, um, um, the Jennifer, are we using the chat or the Q&A? How would you like them to do this? You're on mute. Yes, on mute. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> and so I, I hope you also noticed during this call that you have to really be willing to lean into the discomfort of the tool and just kind of say to the other panelists, can't hear you, it's crackling and it's okay. <laughs> and, and people will get through it and get to the end result. So it's, it's teamwork, even on these um, virtual uh, meetings. Jennifer, sorry. So true. No worries. Um, actually, people were communicating via both channels, Q&A and chat. Um, and one person actually sent in an email question, which perhaps might be the, the, the best place to start. Um, we have a, a question from Trisha Shep, and she has asked for guidance on, you know, which tool should they really look to to use for their annual meeting next month. And she gives us a little bit of data around that. She's going to have up to 120 attendees, six of whom will be panelists, presenters from six different locations. And the meeting will last for an hour, so the free Zoom subscription will not work for them. She also needs to be able to poll. That was a whole lot of information at one time. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, my mind goes directly to the um, Zoom product, not the free version, because um, as you know, there's limitations there. Um, I know the Zoom license we have, you can have up to 100 participants. Um, so we may need to do a little bit of research for you, Tricia, around um, what the next level of Zoom looks like. And I I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna reach out to Ben and see if he has any other input. Um, he's kind of our Zoom license expert. Um, Ben, do you know if, as far as over 100 users, um, what that looks like with Zoom, or um, you may need to look at like a go-to meeting type scenario? So as Zoom is, uh, Trish, I'll just kind of let you know, I, I would recommend Zoom for what you're trying to do. Um, right now, they're, they're really leading the market in, in this video conferencing tools. Um, and they have uh, great customer support also, and also through TechSoup, you can access discounts um, for obtaining Zoom for your nonprofit. And what it is, is we get the 100 um, attendee plan. There are other plans that you can um, upgrade to, uh, obviously for more of a cost. Um, I don't know exactly the attendee limits per se, uh, I know there's the 100 plan, um, and then it goes up from there. I'm not sure exactly what it is or how much it is, but we'd be happy to send over that information to you. Um, it comes directly from TechSoup or uh, the Zoom site itself, so we can get back to some of that information also. Um, Thanks, Ben. One of the things we want you to think about as you think about questions to throw at us are, you know, what, what's scaring you right now? What are you feeling the most trouble with as you've moved into this new environment of remote? And see if we can help you with that on the spot right now, or at least know that we've got to research and get it to you. We do plan to have these sessions every week, same time, same bat channel. Um, so we'll be uh, bringing in some experts, uh, some of them on cybersecurity, some of them on um, um, 
Yeah. Like um, um, change management, um, crisis management. Oh, 365. We're going to bring some experts to be available to ask you questions about that. We'll try to find somebody on Zoom and all different kinds of things for people. And we'll let you know beforehand so that if you're having a particular tool you're using and you're struggling with it, um, let us, you know, we'll, we'll try to make that available. We're just going to make these available every week so you know you've got a place you can call in on Thursdays at noon to get some answers uh, related to your workforce uh, working remotely. <laughs> Um, so there's, there's another question that's, that's related to this and it's still about virtual meeting software, but it's, you know, there's kind of an interesting twist here. Um, this, and again, the question is, Hey, what's the best software for virtual meeting? But is there something that folks should consider relative to whether or not they need video versus audio or both? And does that impact? the recommendations that we might make relative to virtual meeting software. So the question is, um, looking for a tool that is, could be used for video and like a more conference bridge or, um, looking for two separate tools sorry jennifer well that's really the question it, okay. it, you know that's part of the question is do we recommend one tool and knowing that you can choose just audio with zoom for example you don't necessarily have to use the the um video functionality so you know would we would we recommend just one tool for all types of virtual meetings or would we recommend a second tool or a third even, um, if perhaps we could get by with limited functionality. I would say if you've got Office 365, Teams is a really rich tool. And you can do that with just audio. You can do it with audio and visual. And as Ben and Stephanie were just talking about, Zoom is a great tool. We're using it here. You're seeing it, how it works here. And then and, and we've got four panelists and we've got, uh, at one time we had 50 participants, roughly a little bit beneath that. We've got 35 still on right now. And you can see there's an ability to chat and to engage. I know Ben and Stephanie also did research that there's polling capability within Zoom as well. Um, GoToMeeting is a larger tool that is more expensive, um, but it is another option as well. Yeah, and I would just say like for, um like example, Aparo, we have a cloud-based voice over IP phone system, which comes with a just an audio conference bridge. So each employee has their own um, number and their own conference bridge um, ID. So we use that for just audio um, because it's included in our plan. Now, like if was, for instance, Zoom, that is usually you know, a per user, per license, depending on how you're going to use it. And like we have three Zoom accounts and we have to be cautious of, you know, you can't have two meetings going at the same time by sharing an account, if that makes sense. So um, if your phone system, a lot of phone systems provide a conference bridge for no cost for you. Um, and that's kind of a good thing if you're just you know, need the audio piece of it and you're not having to pay anything extra for it. When, let's see, uh, one of the other questions that we've gotten uh, from several different folks and, and Stephanie, you did mention it, but perhaps we should uh, just loop back one more time. Um, we're getting questions as to whether we can make the resources that we've mentioned available to our listening audience and perhaps beyond. Yes, definitely. We will definitely um, put together um, the resources and links to get those resources. And then, um, you know, if you want to reach out to um, Ben and I with additional questions, we're here to provide, um, you know, guidance around technology, advice, you know, be that thought partner for you. Um, I will mention that we do not provide technical support. So, but if you are looking for um, tech support or a managed service, 
provider to kind of help set up computers or install software for you, we can definitely connect you with those. We have quite a few great um, partners that do that. We have had no additional inbound questions. I think we've covered everything that folks asked. They were all very similar, tool recommendations and resources. So Please Jennifer, um, let us know what things you'd like us to focus on in coming sessions. You kind of know where we're thinking about going to be able to support you. And you'll notice on the screen there are two questions. How is this crisis impacting your nonprofits? And how, you're continuing, how are you continuing to deliver your mission? Because one of the things we haven't touched on much today in this call was how to help you in, in the remote delivery of your services. Um, that's a big uh, topic and one that we need to think think about um, how we can help you with that. And um, so if you wanna send us uh, an email, uh, answer those questions or put it here in the platform under questions, how your, uh, your response to those two questions, it may help us be able to better fine tune what we've got. Uh, while Stephanie was talking about, you know, the fact that we don't provide direct tech support, um, we do provide tech guidance and, and counsel. And that's kind of what we're doing right here. It's just giving you um, the best practices that are out there that we're aware of and that we're, um, we know of through our connections and our work. Um, she also mentioned that we can connect you to paid providers who have a philanthropic approach to the way they price and the way they work so that we know that they're good, um, reputable uh, partners and we feel comfortable recommending them to you in a variety of different silos. We also can bring in teams of skilled volunteers. We can do anything ranging from training your team alone to training multiple nonprofits together around a topic. Um, as well as also um, uh, bringing in teams to do actual solutions. So, um, you know, if there's an Office 365 situation going on, which is where we think you might be having issues with right now as you dig into Office 365 and struggle with learning how to better use it because suddenly you're having to better use it because it's the only way you can communicate connect collectively, um, we can put together a, a classroom environment for that. We can bring in a, a coach to work with your team. Uh, or we can bring in a whole team to lift you in a, in a different way around a, maybe selecting a new application because you're concerned about which virtual tool to use. We can, we can do all those things and bring skilled volunteers from the community who are very, very eager to get involved, during, particularly during this time, to help you uh, be able to efficiently adapt in this environment. So all of those things are on the docket that we can help you with if you are um, interested and want to reach out for us to help you that way. You know, Kim, to that end, we did have another interesting question come in um, that we may want to try to, to touch on briefly and perhaps add to later. And, and the question is this, do we have any recommendations for those who do not have a dedicated workspace? Tools, in other words, tools that they can use to get their work done, um, like using their phone, or, you know, can they scan documents with their phones? Are there things they can do with a mobile device? Those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, there are. I would, that's an interesting question, especially around the scanning piece, because I was kind of like, my husband's got the multifunction scanner, but I couldn't get it to work the other day. So I went on my iPhone and I'm like, there's got to be an app to scan this document that I can just text or email so there are apps out there they're they're mostly um for fee like 99 cents to a dollar 99 i found but um there was a lot of great reviews so i know the apple iphone i'm sure android does too have some type of scanning device um and i think as far as yeah dedicated workspace if um you know, you don't have a room, you can go in and shut the door. Um, I just depending on, you know, your living space, sometimes you know, like a dining room table, maybe a good spot. Sometimes I was sitting work in the kitchen, but I guess it just depends on what type of distractions you have or, um, but anybody else have any input on that question yeah I mean, you can always use the photo capability of your phone um and and i have learned to print off my phone my phone will connect to my printer 
Uh, so, you know, if you have to go to a remote printer, you can do things from this. It will Bluetooth into a printer. Um, so that is possible um, if, if you don't have a desktop at home. Any questions related to um, internet capabilities that your team is having, struggling with? Anybody having that kind of issue? Just mm. what happens. Does it come in on our little thing? Yeah, it, I mean, it depends on if it comes in on Q&A or chat, but I'm, I'm not seeing anything inbound yet. Okay. All right. And Je Jennifer, did we get any response on the two questions that are on the um, presentation? How is this crisis impacting your nonprofit? Not as yet. Okay. Please send us those answers when you get Yeah, please send us those answers because um, we would, yeah, love to, love to know and see how we can um, help. And I don't think we need to stay for the full hour if um, folks are done. Yeah. Uh, Jim Warren just made an announcement. He's wanting everyone to know that the, even though the Raptor Center is currently closed to the public, it's still open for online experiences. Oh, right. okay, great. Awesome. That can be a great distraction. <laughs> yeah. <you> need one. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you all very much. We look forward to uh, dialing in again next week and seeing how we can help you um, as you send in questions for us over this, these next couple of days. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.